All righty, here we are, guys. We're we're live. Obviously, it's me, Millennial Prepster, and I have a very special guest, our very special Bart K. He's going to be here doing some, you know, talking with us about kind of uh, veganism. And I, I chose B12, epidemiology, cholesterol, and we're going to talk about the, the famous vegan study as well, because I feel like the foundation of veganism, the building blocks are really on these main topics. And I, I think that we're slowly, every day, there's more and more evidence on the contrary. So I'll let Bart kind of introduce himself, and then I'd like to just jump in. Thanks for, ha thanks for coming on and uh, talking with us, Bart. Hey, it's my absolute pleasure. Uh, you know, as as usual, I'm always happy to to talk to people uh, about diet and about ideology a little bit, uh, but mainly about the science. Uh, that is where I come from. My background is as a senior scientist um, for about the last sort of seventeen years or so, up until about two thousand sixteen, when I thought better of it. Um, so I was involved in the research. I was involved in um, creating the knowledge, I guess, from the ground up, uh, and then obviously teaching the next generation of students. Um, yeah, so that's kind of that's the background that I come from. So I come from a, a standpoint of being able to look at the science and what it tells us, um, look at some of the inferences, what they say, what they don't say, um, and throw some of those challenges out there for some of the the ideologues to try and deal with, I guess. Absolutely. So that's kind of my, that's, that's my standpoint. Yeah. Absolutely. Quick question for you. Um, I, I'm yep. not sure. So I'm just going to add, do you, when, did you get your start with, with military medicine um, in New Zealand or UK? Yeah, I start. well, it wasn't so much necessarily military per se. What my start, if you like, was um, exercise physiology. So the role of the exercise physiologist is to, work out what it is that limits human performance physically uh, at the top end uh, elite athletes so I, I dealt with the new zealand all black rugby team uh, a bit i dealt with the referees association and the nrl refer uh, the rugby league competition down here in in um, australasia uh, and from there i i that was my into the australian defense force because obviously there are a physically demanding occupation absolutely and then and then i was invited to go and do some work with the new zealand sas selection process as well for a bit uh after that was when i got into the into the more um medical side of things if you like with the cardiovascular physiology pathophysiology that kind of stuff so the the last three years that i was in academia that was what i was teaching it was how the heart and lungs and blood and blood vessels work and um and what happens when it goes wrong no that's um, yeah that's because uh, it, it kind of the, the reason why i asked is because um i did you know multiple years in military over 10 10 plus active duty and for us i was a i was a flight medic um that's okay. probably the best way to describe mm. it. it did combat search and rescue and mm. uh we worked hand in hand with a flight surgeon and the funny thing with the flight surgeon who we work with i don't know if it's similar in other in other countries but you know you have this doctor that you know may come from various different backgrounds whether it's you know energy sciences nutrition um mm. pediatrics even you have these different doctors that come to serve and they get cross-trained and they become flight surgeons and I've always, you know, the, the type of people that you get, uh, Sean Baker is another great example. Um, I just noticed they're kind of no nonsense kind of people. And you kind of, you kind of, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you kind of, you know, it's just because it's all about results. It's about facts, mm -hmm. it's about results. Because when you have life's on the line, that's all that matters. And you kind of yeah. strike me very similar. So I just was kind of curious. But it's just funny how, you know, these type of people, you know, you meet them in these circles and you, you know, it's very, yeah. it's just very refreshing to know that, you know, mm -hmm. these are the type of people out there making, making decisions when it comes to the people that serve. So I definitely appreciate that. Cool. Cool. So, yeah. So let's, uh, B12 is kind of the first one I wanted to talk about. Can sure. you, for, 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 for those of, for those of us that may not under, understand, I think a lot of us know that it's a bacteria, right? We, we know that it grows and it can be found in water, but can you just really, really explain what it is? Cause I feel like, I feel like vegans want to tell you that, Oh, B B twelve is just this innocent, harmless little bacteria we find in water, and if you drink dirty water, we'll be fine. I'm not going to drink dirty water because I supplement, but it's pretty much all over the place. And animal mm. agriculture is bad. Can you kind of explain yeah. a little more than than just that narrative? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that at, at its root, the the issue with B twelve and veganism is that you are not going to be able to source uh, adequate B twelve. 
uh, from a vegan diet if you if you you know stick to the to the vegan diet um, religiously for want of a better term uh, b12 is found uh, in animal products that's found in animal foods um, yes it is um, synthesized if you like by bacteria but they're bacteria that hang out with animals um, not so much with plants um, the reason it's called a vitamin is because for those that don't understand the derivation of the term vitamin uh, vite is short for vital and min comes from sort of the mineral so it's a vital mineral um, although it's not necessarily a mineral per se um, but that's basically what what it boils down to is that b12 is required in your diet you can't synthesize it yourself in your body uh, it needs to come into your body on a daily basis from your diet uh, and where is it found well it's found with with animal uh, flesh basically um, so that's that's the place that we need to get it from um, there are supplements available that that claim to be um, vegetarian and, and and indeed vegan in nature the issue with that is where do you draw the line of what's an animal and what's a plant and what isn't uh, i mean do we have animals plants bacteria um fungi um cyanobacter they're all sort of different they come from different kingdoms a lot of people think there are just plants and animals that's it um and so if, if you if you're working on the just plants and animals um ideology and you say eating animals is bad well then you know every every time you put a carrot in your mouth you're eating some bacteria that is on the carrot and and they're not plants so right you know it's that whole argument i guess yeah in terms of and i guess uh you know like i said plant-based don't need to say that again um but mm -hmm. I, I i'm a permaculturist right so i i mm -hmm. definitely what you just mentioned soil my, uh, microbe um, just there is life in every, and it, it, there should be life, you know, in every scoop of soil, every, every, every scoop of earth that, that you pick up. And I think yeah. that when we're talking about the B12, I think people want to forget and we'll kind of touch on this briefly in, in a minute, but this idea that, you know, what you said about sourcing, because if you look at our ancestors, they, they drank, you know, unfiltered water and, mm. and, and they died, you know, it, today in modern, in modern society, 2019, 3.4 million children die every year from waterborne illnesses just in the modern day right so when we're looking at when we're looking at this um it's you know it's prevalent you know it's the cdc says that 80 percent of deaths uh are due to diarrhea worldwide and that's the number one killer of children under five more so mm -hmm. than aids malaria measles combined so i i really feel like it's unsubstantiated when they say you can source your b12 um but they don't know where to source it from and those sources have other pathogens and other horrible things attached to it and I think it's funny because the only source of B12 I've ever seen in, in plant in plants or uh, that's found in plants is in the, the comfrey plant, especially the Russian variety. But if you eat too much of that as a human, it's going to kill you. You know what I mean? It's gonna, literally yeah. going to stop your liver. And it's good for livestock. You know, I, I actually, um, the rabbits I have, I have New Zealand blues, um, New Zealand, right? Okay. Everything, yeah. everything great in New Zealand. <laughs> but yeah. uh, they're, they're great. They're a great meat rabbit and they can eat. You know, they can eat these leafy greens and they can eat these, you know, I think comfrey is great. People use it for teas and stuff, but there's a reason why we can't eat large portions of it because it will hurt us. Yeah. So I think that it's important to realize that animals are put on, you know, scientifically speaking, you have predators, you have prey, and they're put on this habit on the earth to, you know, they can eat things and they can metabolize it and they can produce a product, you know, basically yeah. the whole, the, the American term, you know, pigs are great because they can turn grass into bacon kind of thing. And, and that's yeah. true because they can take things that we can't metabolize neat and they can make a great finished product. So I think mm. you, I think you hit it pretty yeah. good, but I just feel like the B12 isn't, it's, you know, they say, Hey, B12 is out there. Vegans have no idea how it's out there, how they get it. All they know is they go to somebody at a lab, synthesizes it, puts it in the capsule or an injection says, here you go. Yeah, most B12 supplements that are generated in a lab and put in these capsules and sold to people uh, is in a, in a form that actually contains what I would consider to be a frightening level of cyanide. Um, and a lot of people don't understand that the B12 supplement that they're taking is in that form, usually. Right. Um, there are 
companies that manufacture and sell B12 supplements that are not uh, full of cyanide, but you will pay through the nose for that stuff. That's very, very expensive. I actually so, know somebody near and dear to me who takes uh, B12 and they have to take B12 and injections because the oral B12 just isn't enough. It's not, it's, uh, however mm -hmm. it was synthesized before basically made it to where um, she's unable to, she's unable to use it. And, uh, you know, love this person to death, this person plant-based and, you know, it turned out, I mean, this is all, it's anecdotal, but it hits home. So that's why it matters to me. Um, you know, if vegans can talk about, you know, anecdotal evidence that helps their feelings, I think that, you know, I can say that, yeah, this person taking, taking the oral, uh, B12 had to go into injections and who wants to live with injections for the rest of their life sourced mm -hmm. good quality animal products. And guess what? Fixed. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's crazy how, it's crazy yeah. how, how, uh, genetics work, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Epidemiology. I kind of want to touch on this. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I can't tell you how many how many conversations I have, and it always ends with, "Well, these associations lead to lead to this." I won't talk about the the mechanism, but this is this is what all these studies that people have taken surveys on online or in a doctor's mm -hmm. office has said. So therefore, they're true. Can you yeah. shed some from a scientific standpoint what we're actually looking at? Because I honestly I don't know. All I know yeah. is when I see a whole ideology based upon epidemiology studies from what happens in doctor's office, having yeah. been on the other side and asking people, how much alcohol do you take? How much tobacco do you take? And being lied to directly, it makes mm -hmm. me kind of question the validity of these tests. And I think anybody that's worked in the medical field, I have not met one person that has worked in the medical field that says, oh yeah, majority of my patients are 100% upfront and honest with their diet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay, yeah, you, you have sort of um, outlined the situation there quite well. It's basically, it's an ideology. It's not a science. It's um, epidemiology is a way to paint a picture. Um, it, it is a way of informing, I guess, on trends largely uh, out there in the... Uh, in the wider sort of population that you're, you know, is under consideration. Uh, you do need to watch out for what you've just said. There's that you know, people tell lies, uh, especially when you're talking about things like people's habits of smoking, alcohol, dietary intakes, all that kind of thing. If you base your, um, your knowledge and information purely on what people tell you, then you're setting yourself up for a fall before you even start because, as I say, people tell lies about what they eat. Um, so that's the first stumbling block of epidemiology is a pseudoscience. Absolutely. Uh, you follow the rabbit hole all the way down, though, and it gets much, much more interesting again. Um, let's just be absolutely crazy for a moment and let's just assume and pretend that absolutely every response you get from every person to every questionnaire is 100% truthful and that information is absolutely above reproach let's just imagine that that's the case we know You're it a great isn't man <laughs> we know it isn't but let's just imagine that it is right fun. okay what we now have is a bunch of data that associates or correlates a with b so it might be the intake of meat with the incidence of some hard uh, outcome endpoint like for the development of the disease cancer. Um, it might be uh, the intake of saturated fat with uh, the incidence of diagnosable um, heart disease or cerebrovascular event of some kind. Okay, fine. In the first day, in fact, within the first hour of any undergraduate degree in any of the physical sciences, be they biology or chemistry or medicine or physiology or whatever it is, within that first hour in any school that's worth their salt anywhere in the world, they are going to tell their students this. Under no circumstances, and they mean under no circumstances, does associative data correlation ever establish causality? 
Wow, can you just repeat the yeah, just repeat that, repeat that again, because that's that's huge, and I think it's worth yeah, yeah. Under no circumstances whatsoever can associative or correlative data ever establish a causal artifact. I mean, are are we done here then? I mean, doesn't that pretty, just uh, pretty much? Pretty <laughs> are, much. Are, are we we're, we're yeah. good. I mean, yeah. that's the Although, goal we, you know, for medicine, right? I mean, that's that's yeah. what the students are taught, us the researchers are taught. That okay. is the gold standard for what we're talking about. Okay. So, did you hear the discussion I had several weeks ago with Isaac Brown pretending to be a doctor called Ricky? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay. So that was his whole thing. He was, like, I'm not going to talk to you about mechanism. Mechanism is speculation. I'm not going to talk to you about how this works. That's how we knew he wasn't really a doctor because doctors right. do want to talk about mechanism. They do want to know how things work. He wanted to talk about his high level associative studies and he wanted to set those up as being an authority, as being a higher level of knowledge, a better level of uh, investigation than actual research based mechanistic, you know, evidential uh, experimental trials. Um, and that's why I asked him, you know, on that day, you know, what was the first thing I taught you in medical school, which he, which he then got around by saying, uh, uh, they taught me a lot of things I can't really remember. Mm. I said, like, you know, was, what I should have actually did is, you know, what I should have said was Isaac, quote for me the Hippocratic Oath, would you? Yeah. Because he wouldn't have been able to do that either. <laughs> Anywho, because, you know, Isaac Brown is not a doctor. Anywho, <clears throat> uh, that's another story for another day. And, uh, you know, all of that stuff will come out in the court case very soon, I'm sure. But there you go. Um, Pretty much we're done in, in terms of, of epidemiology there. Yep, there is no way in the world that any scientist worth their salt, unless they are being paid off by someone, is ever going to say this associative data is good enough that we can say there's a causal artifact here. Okay, yeah. and I'm gonna I'm gonna push back. I'm not pushing back against you. I'm pushing back sure. on this is 100. I, I I agree, and that's something mm -hmm. that, um, you know, coming from my even from my line my very small scope of medical understanding, you know, as a, as emergency, doing emergency medicine, flight, flight paramedic medicine, T triple C. Um, I look at, I look at the data as, as I'm sure that everybody else worth their salt does. And there are definitely parts of it, especially we're talking about epidemiology that, that don't, that don't make sense. And I was going to segue later, but I think, I think you, you perfectly segued into this. So we do know that there are vegan doctors out there. Yeah. Um, Esselstein um, is one that came up with this, the famous study, uh, Campbell, Bernard, Gregor. I don't even know if Gregor's a real doctor, uh, uh, but it, it, that's besides the point. Um, yeah. There's a lot of these plant-based doctors out there. And my question is, based upon the fact that these doctors are now, a lot of them are coming out stating that veganism is no longer a, you know, it's a lifestyle, it's not a diet. And then you even have some doctors that are coming out saying that, you know, advocating for well if you have a fish every once in a while you know that's okay i can't remember what doctor i watched that said that um vegan doctor um mm. ah, gosh I'll, I'll i'll have to look i'll I'm, i have it on my channel or not my channel i have it on in the feed somewhere but essentially what, what what do they have to gain i know they have a lot of money to gain from this obviously but as far as what what supplements are they pushing because i i know that you know you um sean baker you guys have had run-ins in the past with you know, big pharma with people that, you know, for lack of better mm -hmm. purpose are part of the, you know, the, the, the woven cloth, so to speak. So what, what do they have to gain? What, what are they trying to gain based upon what your training experience is? Well, I mean, uh, there are definitely, you know, I haven't come across any of these guys who are not uh, either selling a supplement uh, or indeed selling an ideology and asking people for um, money for memberships for uh, you know various sites or, or whatever else. Uh, and I don't begrudge them that. I mean, at the end of the day, people need to make a living. What I'm against is people making a living by promulgating misinformation, lying to the public, misinforming people, um, saying you know things like meat is bad for you um i wonder if you were talking about garth davis before. yes that was uh, i just yeah. pulled him up yeah in yeah. one of his videos where he's talking about it he actually does say well if you must you know and he you know he clearly i think he clearly defined exactly what 
what the narrative was. And it was a little scary because I feel like, you know, even at, even at his worst, he had, you know, put that plug in there just for the legality aspect of it. And then he was out there bashing, bashing on people like yourself. And it's just, that's what I'm confused. Like what, what do they have to gain? Cause I see people like you, um, Sean Baker, you know, I see these people and just, let's just say Carnus in general that, that I've come in contact with. Mm -hmm. They just, they're not trying to sell you anything, man. They're not trying to not even convincing you. Like, you know, I'm, I'm in these circles and people know that I eat a lot of plant-based foods, but nobody's trying to attack me and tell me you're wrong. You're doing it wrong. Your diet's wrong. And Mm -hmm. you know, everybody's diet can be better. I'm, I'm no different, but you know, nobody's trying to change who I am as a person. No. They offer help. These are people that, you know, I can reach out to and just, you know, have discussions like this. You know, I don't feel like people on, on, on your side of the aisle are trying to force anything on anybody or try mm-hmm. to profit. But I go to, you go to one Instagram, you know, vegan activist, one vegan Instagram, and they have, you know, everything laid out there and they're trying to sell you these supplements. They're trying to get you to buy these books. They're trying to get you to do all this stuff because it's like, if mm-hmm. you don't do it the way they do it, you did it veganism wrong. And if you do yes, do it the way they do it and you get unhealthy and you admit it you still did veganism wrong so i'm just yes, wondering you know in 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 the big scheme of things historically speaking you know what did these doctors have to gain from really leading these people astray um i think that apart from the sale of uh, various different supplements uh that that they've got going and let's face it there are carnists that are doing this too like dr berg so-called dr berg does okay. this you know um, when you say I'm not selling anything, well, I mean, I guess I'm not really trying to, to push any particular agenda on anybody else, but I do have a Patreon available. People can go and join my Patreon if they want to. Well, I mean, um, donate and support, but I mean, when you, I, I guess what I'm saying is when you see Garth Brooks, Bernard, and you, ha- you have all these people that are going on to happy, healthy, vegan, and all these other big activists, and they're bashing a group of people. You know what yeah. I mean? Like everything is yeah. very, it, it's, it's ideologue. Like there's a difference between saying, hey, I have a Patreon, support me if you like. And, you know, you're not going on there. You know, I haven't seen you anyway. Go on with other channels, you know, Steph, uh, uh, Carnival, you know, Tristan. And I'm not, I don't see you going on there and being like, okay, this is what we got to do. We got to take to the streets. We got to do this. We got to do that. They're so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Taking yeah. anecdotal evidence, taking clips mm-hmm. and totally misrepresenting them. Like, I, I don't see that, you know. And yeah, let's, let's go down the steakhouse and stand <laughs> in front of it and sing. And yeah, no. exactly. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't see that at all. And yeah. I think most people can see through that. And so, yeah. you know, and, and those people would never have me on. I've tried. I've tried to talk to, you know, all these so-called reasonable, reasonable vegans and, and nobody, nobody wants to talk and, and they'll tell mm-hmm. you straight up. I'm not interested in, in having a discussion and then insert identity you know, identity yeah. blow here because of things they think they know or don't know. So I guess that's my big question because I'm not saying everybody's trying to sell something. And I know obviously um, it's obvious from this, you have, you know, a lot more respect that, than I do for that kind of thing. And I definitely appreciate that. But um, I guess when, I guess they, for me, they lose, you know, professionalism when they start uh, spewing the knot. I mean, they're, they're selling something. I mean, it's plain. It's just, why yeah. can't you be open about, about it? Because, you know, mm. It's not a diet. It is an ideology. And why can't people be more upfront about it? You know what I mean? I mean, I I think the difference between guys like myself and guys like, for example, Richard Burgess or any of these other ideologues is that at the end of the day, I actually don't give a rip-roaring shit what you or anybody else eats, actually. it's What I'm about is I'm about offering the scientifically valid, balanced information to the best of my ability, which is significant in science. I can say, look, you know, I've I've done a lot of work in science. I've been around science for many, many years. I understand it really well. Uh, I have three advanced research degrees. I've sat on the editorial board of several different journals. Um, I've produced, you know, quite a long list of peer review publications of my own, uh, including, you know, most recently in about November last year, uh, I, I published a study about the dangers of oxidation of omega-3 oil supplements, for example. Um, so I've, I've been around the thing and I can talk about the thing with, uh, a lot of people think it's it's an appeal to authority. No, it's, it's just I'm saying to you, look, I do have some background here. I, you know, maybe you need to listen to what I've got to say in terms of the science if at the end of the day you don't want to listen to what I've got to say, I can't make you. Um, 
Well, that's that, that's that's the vegan narrative is if they don't like what you say, insert fallacy here. I mean, I've yeah. I've never seen so many insert. I've never seen so many fallacies in my entire life. Fallacy to mm. authority, fallacy to nature, fallacy. To, I'm like, yeah. I, I mean, literally, if they don't like something, it's a fallacy of some kind, and I don't understand how. I mean, their whole their whole their life is fall, fallacy to veganism. Mm. I mean, it's ridiculous. But I, I I see where you're coming from. I just want you to know from. Uh, people from my side of the, of the aisle. Well, when I mean people from my side of the aisle, I mean people that are into preparedness, people that look at things kind of with a more skeptical eye than I would say m most people. I'm not tooting my own horn, horn here, but people that ask a lot of questions, I think it's very evident to us that we can see through certain narratives. You know what I mean? When you're going to go on there, and especially with, like, for example, you just, you know, gave us a very good, quick resume that has, you know, for all intents and purposes, could be weaponized for intent. And I don't see that. And I don't think anybody out there can say, you know, he's using his his authority in his his resume to do X, Y, and Z. Um, mm -hmm. You're your own person. You're very individual. It doesn't feel like anybody's pulling the strings, so to speak. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people can respect that. And a lot of people look yeah. at that. And that's why I think that's why you have the following that you do, because, you know, for right or wrong, you know, you're you're one of those you're one of those voices out there that is your own person. And nobody can take that from you. You know what yeah. I mean. And, and you go about it very, per, very professionally. I've seen you talk to, to, to vegans that are just completely ridiculous that like to drink apple juice. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean. But you present yourself mm. very well, and you're very charismatic, and, and you're your own person. I think a lot of people can see that and respect that. So, yeah. although you know, let, let's also to, to be fair and, and to give a full disclosure statement, I've have been also I have been known to lose my shirt as well with someone like Isaac Brown pretending to be a doctor. <laughs> Right, and you know anyone that that saw that discussion that they will know exactly why I lost my shirt. Basically, on that day, it was you know everybody's got their limit, haven't they? And yeah, absolutely, um, wow, that was just some that was some crazy stuff. But anyway, um, there are much better, uh, much more professional discussions planned coming up. For example, uh, next weekend, I'm not sure whether it's Friday, Saturday, or Sunday yet, but next weekend I will be having a discussion live online with Garth Davis. That's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see so, that. I can't wait either. That's going to be huge because, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be asking him all sorts of questions. Uh, mainly, we're going to follow through his video, his recent video, where he was saying meat is bad for you, basically, and he outlined a number of reasons why uh, right. he's prepared to say that that's the case, uh, all based on associative studies, pseudoscience, uh, high-level studies. This is highly correlated with that right. type of stuff. Um, uh, you know, it, it, I don't know if you saw that video, but in the first few minutes, he comes out with the with an absolute clangor. He, he comes on and he straight away says, "If you're on a carnivore diet, you can't get vitamin C." I remember that, yeah. And I'm like, "Wow, what?" <sighs> so yeah, I'll be asking him about that, and I'll be asking him about uh, the evidence that he's got that TMAO is a problem. Um, which will be interesting because there isn't any. Um, well, I mean, I think it's interesting that he would say that TMAO is a huge issue, but then in a video openly say, well, if you have to have a piece of salmon, go ahead. Well, that's yeah. funny because I'm pretty sure a piece of salmon is going to give you more TMAO than, yeah. than B for anything else. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah so that, that's, that's kind of like, I, I like to kind of segue into cholesterol then. I know this is where, this is honestly, this is how I, how I, uh, this is how I got introduced into your work um, because, yeah. For yeah. me, oh, how do I say this without being – well, since it's just two lads here, two bloats, I'm just going to be very honest with you. Um, this never made any sense to me, and I never had a way of explaining it until I met your work, if that makes right. sense, right? Sure. I feel like deep down inside, you know, we know what our bodies are telling us, right? Mm. Yeah. And I knew that what you were saying was 100% correct. Um, I just didn't know how to explain it. And then I went, went through your work. I listened to hours of your videos. And I think you are able to explain and put into words how we all feel. And you're able to do that through a scientific lens. And I feel like mm -hmm. when we're talking about cholesterol, I feel like the one thing, one thing I might notice, and tell me if, I'm, if you've noticed this as well, everybody wants it's this demonization of beef, this demonization of pork. You know what I mean? It's just demonization of animal agri of animal agriculture, which I think it's which I think is horrific. But I think yeah. they take away the bigger picture of what cholesterol is and mm. the associative and correlated studies. And I think that this is manufactured by big pharma. And so these yeah. are all obviously I'm throwing out huge accusations here that I know that you've already put to rest. But if you could just you know 
kind of expound expound on that a little more because I feel like you know a lot of us know deep down inside that eating meat is not going to make us have a heart attack a week right. from now or a year from now or a life a, you know a whole Ever. life <laughs> a, a, yeah. whole, a whole life away. So can you just touch Correct. on that? Yeah. So the whole cholesterol idea was developed um, to subserve the needs of the people developing that whole uh, ideology in the first instance from the ground up. Uh, there's a thing in academia called publish or perish, which means that when you're working in an academic institution, you have to hold down a full-time teaching load. You're expected to attract external funding from major external organizations like I was doing, for example, with the military operations uh, with the All Blacks, that kind of thing. Uh, and also on top of that, you're required to produce research outputs and get them published in peer-reviewed journals. Um, now, there was a bloke called Ansel Keys running around in the 50s and 60s, and he was actually a fish physiologist, if I remember correctly, um, who was having trouble coming up with ideas or coming up with studies or anything to talk about in terms of fish. Um, but he had this idea that he wanted to branch out and talk a little bit about diet and all that kind of thing. And so he had a hypothesis and that's where you start as a scientist. You say, I've got a theory. Usually your theory is based on some kind of um, logical backing, some kind of idea that, you know, what you're, what you're, Something substance, huh? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something with substance, exactly. Something that that has something behind it. Like you know, this is why I think this is probably you know how this how this fits together. And then you do an experimental experimental. That's what you do in science. You do a right. study that um, either ref refutes your hypothesis uh, or supports your hypothesis. And there's a there's a threshold benchmark test for that uh, that's done statistically. Uh, if your hypothesis is no good, then you go back to the drawing board and you either change your hypothesis slightly or you completely expunge it and start again or whatever. Um, anyway, Ansel Key's hypothesis was that the consumption of saturated fat in the diet would be associated, correlated with the incidence of heart disease uh, in humans. Um, and so then what he did is he collected data from 21 different countries. And how did he do that? He did that with one of our favorite uh, mechanisms of science, uh, which was a questionnaire. <laughs> so he's, whoops, before you even start, he's asked people how much saturated fat do you eat? Oh, hardly any, they said, mostly, uh, probably. Um, Anywho, he, he had data from 21 different countries on saturated fat intake, and he also had medical records on cardiovascular disease incidents. Uh, and his hypothesis was not borne out. It was not supported. Now, that's no good if you want to publish something. So what he did is he took data from seven of those 21 countries. He handpicked, he cherry-picked those data points which did support his hypothesis. Uh, and then he published his work and he called it the seven countries study. Um, and he got it past a couple of peer reviewers and he got it past the editor of the journal concerned. And hey, presto, that was the start of the idea that eating saturated fat is associated with uh, cardiovascular disease. Now, if we go back to 10, 15 minutes ago, what do we know about association and correlation with respect to causality? It's even, I mean, in this, in this, in this aspect, it's even, it's even less. <laughs> mm. Even less because it's based on, you know, the responses of people to a questionnaire. But again, okay, let's just ignore that completely okay, because that, ignore it. basically right there, that invalidates the whole thing before we even start. So end of discussion on, on whether there's any proof there given by this particular mechanism. Right. There isn't. But let's just imagine for fun that every response to every questioning was absolutely truthful and the data is absolutely valid. It's still an association. It's not an indication of causation. Well, absolutely not. And, mm. and so, and yeah, and I was always taught, and maybe you can, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but 
you know, I know back in the 60s, you know, I think Harvard had a study about no more than 300 milligrams of cholesterol, uh, cholesterol you know, two eggs yeah. a week kind of kind of nonsense. And yeah. then I know they backed off on it. And from what I understand, um, blood cholesterol levels has little to do with, you know, what we're putting, what we're eating in general. And then yeah. it doesn't take into fact, I think there's something to be said that the Western diet is is shit. Yeah. Excuse my language, but it, mm. it, it's and so so for people like us that take great pride in where we source our animal products from, and most every carnist that I know takes great pride in where they you know and where they source their source their animal products from, I find this to be yeah. very disheartening. Like take take me for example, take take rabbit, right? I obviously I produce high quality pedigreed five generations back side rabbits. Look at me tooting my horn, but I know where my animals products come from, right? And yeah. I can tell you that there have been many studies done on it. Rabbits, if you eat them, yeah, they have cholesterol. But here's something crazy: um, they don't have enough fat on them to actually, you know, you'll get you'll you can die if you just eat rabbit meat and you don't, yeah. you don't, you know, supplement your 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 it's, diet at it's all. Too like, lame. Yeah, yeah, it's too late. Yeah, like, like literally, like you can, I can have, you know, I can have tons of cholesterol. But if I'm just eating rabbit, the meat is literally so lean that I mean, obviously, I have a lot of fat to lose, right? No yeah. pun intended, okay. but sure. but literally, it would it, it would kill me if I didn't supplement with fish or eggs or anything like that. So this idea mm -hmm. that you know if you eat enough animal products, you're somehow going to die of a heart attack. Well, I mean, unless unless I'm mistaken, I mean, maybe you can answer. Can you get a heart attack from eating rabbit? Is that even possible? Is there even enough fat in in the diet to clog your arteries? Even if you were to eat as much of it as possible, I, I don't think there is. I, I think yeah, the, nah. the science. I think the mm -hmm. science. You know, and so when you bring this up to people. You know, they, they, you know, they dig their heels in, in the ground and, you know, they want to put it back, the onus back on beef and back on pork. And I just feel like they don't realize there's lots of other animal products out there. And then, like you said, causation, you know, you know, yeah. correlation yeah. does not equal causation. And I just, I, I don't know what, I mean, I feel like, I feel like it's just this kind of information you, you've, like I said, you've expounded on it perfectly. I don't know if it's just, it goes over their head or they just have their eyes closed and, and they just don't want to see it. I mean, I, I think in any echo chamber, when you hear the sound that you want to hear, you'll latch onto that and you'll accept that. And that's the truth. That's all the truth you need, really. Um, and at the end of the day, if you buy into the uh, vegan ideology, what you want to hear is a whole bunch of scientific sounding reasons why eating animal products is bad for you and why eating plants is good for you. And anyone that says that to you and anything that even sounds remotely scientific, you will suck up and right. you'll love that. And anybody like myself that says, well, hang on a minute, let's actually look at the science, you know, has horns and a tail and a three pronged fork and red skin um, and, you know, needs to be um, nailed to the nearest uh, tree and set on fire for you know how how dare I say this sort of thing, but at, at the end of the day, the whole idea that cholesterol somehow plays a causal role in heart disease from the ground up. As soon as you start actually looking into and looking behind the thing, look at the mechanisms a bit, look at what the role of cholesterol in the body is, why is it there in the first place, what does it do. Uh, the whole argument falls to pieces very, very quickly. And it's only this this scratching the surface, cursory look at things, this is correlated with that, therefore that's all you need to know argument. Can I can I can I can I push you a little more into that? Um yeah. I know you've talked about you talk about genetics, right? And yep. I, I don't believe unless I've never had it vegans use this claim. I've never heard of it um in in, in the literature at all. Maybe you have. Has there mm -hmm. ever been a full-on vegan society, past, present, ever. I mean, has no. there ever been one? Um, no. Because you talk about the the genes, the the, the genetics, and I'm, I think we can all agree nothing is perfect. But it's pretty. I mean, it's as close as perfect as you can get as far as people living. You know, the, the body knows what it needs, and I yeah. think, yeah. and I think okay. that there's something I mean, to say that. So, where do they get this? Where do they get this? Hey, vegans, we, you know, we were created to be vegan, and we just it went off the reservation, like. Can you speak to that? Yeah, look, uh, the vegans will will jump up and down and say you can't don't have any studies to support your claims that the, the carnivorous lifestyle is good and indicated and isn't going to cause health problems, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
to which my answer is, look, you know, you guys don't have any studies either. What you have is a bunch of studies on plant-based individuals. Uh, and you talk about blue zones, for example. Well, you know, all these blue zones uh, involve populations that have a significant amount of animal protein and animal fat intake. Absolutely. And, I mean, I'm 70-30, technically. Right. So you there know, you go. That's, that's, I mean, a third of my diet is easily, mm -hmm. you know... Yeah you know, animal products. So, I mean, so the, it's a real battle to actually find any studies where the subject pool concerned in those studies were true vegans. So the evidence for the vegan diet being good for you and indicated and healthful is as lacking as the evidence is for the carna, the, the carnist lifestyle, I guess. So that that's tit for tat there basically in terms of that. When you start looking at the anecdotes, you'll see, well, you know, just go on YouTube and try and find how many videos you can find why I left veganism or why I'm no longer a vegan. Uh, you won't have too much trouble finding, you know, a number of those, will you? No, not at all. And then do a search for why I left carnivory, why I quit being a carnivore. You'll find a handful of those, and they're usually put together by vegan ideologues who probably never were carnivores, actually. Um, they just look like people who, you know, how you can pick a vegan from yeah. you know, ten, 10 steps away absolutely. Um, just by looking at them. And, and if you can't, you know, there's a, there's a joke that goes around that says, you know, how, do, how can you tell a vegan? And the answer is, don't worry, they'll fucking tell you. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> so that's you're on to something. That's basically how it goes with that. But, yeah, so, you know, when you start to say, well, let's beat our chests and say we've got all this evidence, well, no, you don't, actually. Um, it, it isn't there. What you've got is some evidence that is on a lifestyle that's a little bit similar to what you do as a vegan, but actually they have a, a significant uh, amount of animal protein and fat in their diets in these blue zones, etc. Uh, the Mediterranean diet also includes a lot of it, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, can we stop saying we've got all this evidence and you guys don't? Because, you know, you don't, actually. No, I agree. Uh, I, I, that's the thing. So I just wanted to make sure I wasn't crazy. So there, there's mm -hmm. no evidence or studies to state that there was ever a, you know, vegan or even really a vegetarian society out there. I don't know of any society that ate nothing but, you know, eggs and plant products, right? Because, I mean, modern day, oh, yeah. modern day agriculture, as far as, you know, egg laying, like this whole idea that we're going to use animals and we're going to farm them is kind of re relatively recent in that in that regards um yeah. so i mean the yeah. fact that i don't think anybody you know in the early you know in the early days was making fences for chickens and cooping them up and doing any of that stuff so no. i no, just not, i don't know i'm not aware of any human population uh in our natural history that we could look at and say look there's a human population that were vegan um because veganism is a modern day is a modern day you know phenomenon that's created vegetarian. by oil. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, being able to take all these because I'm a very firm believer, and this is just me, and maybe this is my ideology. I mean, I care about sustainability, like you. I don't care what anyone else does, but you know, I hate when vegans want to say that they are the platform of science when they are the platform of sustainability. But mm. the idea that you're going to go to a farmer's market, spend seven times the cost on produce from produce that was shipped in from all different crop zones across the across the country and across the world and somehow mm -hmm. you are virtuous just to me that makes no sense um mm -hmm. and then you're buying your you're buying all your supplements you know even though you know you say you only take b12 but we really know that you have you know 17 or 18 in your cabinet you know what i mean so yeah i just yeah. I find it very disingenuous mm -hmm. yeah um I, you know uh, the vegan ideology is not the platform of science and, it, and it's not the platform of, of sustainability either. It's, it's an idea that is self-serving. It's based on, um, I'm going to say it, it's based on brainwashing its devotees Absolutely. into believing a certain way and thinking a certain way. It's about fallacy. Um, it's about denying your genetic heritage. It's about denying who you are as a human being. Hey, if you want to opt out of the human race, absolutely, that's your right. But I don't think you have a right to encourage a whole bunch of other young, impressionable people usually to do the same thing and to opt out with you.
Right, and I think the biggest, I think, and here, and the, the, I don't want to be conspiratorial. Um, I think I'll I'll openly say it. I think the biggest thing that veganism has to hurt hurt modern society is what they're doing now, and unfortunately, the implementation of laws that would restrict the average person from consuming animal products, whether that be you know ordinances that prevent people from homesteading what, or mm-hmm. putting mm-hmm. red tape on you know, where you can purchase meat, how much meat you can purchase. I mean, we see yeah. these things similarity with junk food, right? And I think if yeah. they can make it, if they can, you know, if you can, res- I mean, in, in the state of New York, you can restrict a business's <laughs> ability to serve you more than 32 ounces of soda. Hey, to break it to you, if I want more than 32 ounces of soda, I should be able to drink more than 32 ounces of soda. But they yeah. have implemented these, these, these restrictions. So if they can mm-hmm. do that to soda, the idea that they can't, you know, put a, a, ha- a sad face on uh, animal product and, and restrict it. I think that's, and I'll be honest with you, I think that's the scariest thing. I don't think yeah. we're there yet. I don't think we'll get there, but there's something to be said that it's happening in other, in other forums. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something that I'm obviously, you know, concerned with. Um, yeah. But I think but the I'm, biggest thing, I'm go ahead. Absolutely with you. Absolutely with you there. At my core, I'm a libertarian. I believe that the government should get its, you know, get out of our business. Basically, absolutely. Uh, there are there are some some central tenets of government, some central roles that government should uh, maintain, like a bit of infrastructure, uh, defend our borders against invaders. You know, have a meaningful, uh, worthwhile defence force, um, have a police force, uh, have laws that protect all individuals from you know the basic rights of of their life. And their property and that's it you know yeah. the government's got no business in health whatsoever the government's got no business in education whatsoever actually um etc 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 and certainly they've got no business talking to us about nutrition um what we can buy food wise etc et right. et and we're already yeah and you're right and we're already seeing these restrictions mm-hmm. heavily so yeah it's something that that I worry about because you know if you were to create a law and I, I'll, I'll I'll come out and say it by fiat and say you're no longer allowed to do this, that's pretty scary, you know. And mm. uh, it's something that it's something that I look at. And one thing which you know doesn't really, you know, and I me in particular, I feel like I'm more in a I'm in a very vulnerable position as well because um, I always bring there's this there's this uh, Supreme Court uh, case law that just came out in Florida this last year. And basically, the Supreme Court of Florida said that it will not look into uh, local restrictions on home gardening because right. there there are places where, um, and especially in, sun, in you know the Sunshine State of Florida, where people mm-hmm. are being ticketed and they're being you know pretty much you know they're all intents and purposes criminalized for having home gardens. Now, yeah. obviously, home grown gardens you know are gr- growing vegetables and that kind of thing. But if you can't have a home garden, there's no way you're going to be able to have chickens or goats. Or rabbits no. or anything like that, and so the demonization of of these you know of, of these different lifestyles and choices should be problematic to all of us. And so that's that's what I'm worried about because vegans don't care about gardening. Mm-hmm. They don't garden. They don't do anything. They go to the store. They buy their grow their oil oil power groceries. So mm-hmm. that's kind of that's kind of my biggest my biggest fear. I kind of want to jump into the Esselstein study right quick, and then I kind of want to go back and touch touch base on um, on what we were just talking about, but. Is there any, can you, can you show me in the literature? I've looked everywhere. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong place. Is there any documentation that Esselstein can show to actually prove what their, what his, uh, what his, uh, patients were eating? Cause I can't find any journal. I can't find any link. All I can find is he told them they cannot eat this, but was there any thing to show or prove that that even happened? I've, I've not seen substantiation of what his, subject pool and his study definitely ate and didn't eat no because yeah, that's the, that's the thing like this is supposed to be the Esselstyn study is supposed to be the for all intents and purposes this is the gold standard of veganism correct he reversed mm. heart disease um mm. and i know that in his yeah. presentation you know it states that they are not to eat that like this is what you can't eat if it has a face you can't eat it yeah. but where's the proof that that happened mm. okay i mean at this point it's not even like i mean you have a directive with no well, what do we know? What did yeah. they eat? Well, we don't know. We have to take the word, I guess, of the author of the study as to what the subjects ate. And I guess the subject author is taking the words of the subjects again. So we've got, uh, you know, respondent data. 
we don't actually have an experiment here. We haven't actually measured anything in a lab or used any sort of kit or anything. What we've done is ask people to eat a certain way and to confirm that they've done that. Um, so we're relying on the truthfulness of that. Personally, in terms of looking at the science, I am actually quite comfortable that if you have a bunch of people who have been eating the standard Western or standard American diet for most of their life, they will have a, a degree of heart disease because that's the worst possible diet you can eat, the standard diet. If you put those people on a vegan diet and remove all animal products from their diet, I genuinely believe that that will be associated with a regression in their heart disease um, situation. And this is the study that vegans bang on and say, yeah, it's the only diet that's ever been shown and ever been proven to cure heart disease. Well, yes, the study, the, the parallel study on a carnivore lifestyle hasn't yet been done and it will find the same thing, probably right. better actually. The thing that's causing the heart disease is inflammation the inflammation is a direct causal artifact of having a mixed media diet if you like having a mixed macronutrient diet of the kind that the standard western and standard american diet is um, there's a thing called the randall cycle or the glycerol fatty acid cycle if you like which determines the fuel utilization in our body, it also determines whether our body is in an anabolic state, a catabolic state. So anabolic is building up the storage, in this case of fat. Um, when you think about it, as, as we evolved, most of us evolved in parts of the world where there are clear different seasons because of the latitudes that we lived at. Not so much in the equatorial people, but uh, those who have lived at any kind of latitude at all, summer, autumn, uh, otherwise known as fall, winter, spring, you know, right. pretty much that kind of thing. And the availability of foodstuffs in nature and, and its makeup macro, macronutrient-wise changed throughout the year. So what you've got is a situation where in the autumn slash fall, you've got a lot of um, carbohydrate and a lot of fat uh, available in the diet if you're a hunter-gatherer. Uh, that's when the fruits are around mostly. Um, I feel like you're getting to my, in, into my whole, into my thing of crop, you know, well, crop perhaps. zones and perhaps. seasons and yeah. science and. <laughs> <laughs> so in any case, what, what it boils down to is if you have a lot of carbohydrates and a lot of fat in your diet, and I don't just mean in any one meal, I mean what you eat across the week, for example. If you mix your macros a lot, fats and carbohydrates, that tells your body it's fall, it's, it's autumn time, and your body then goes, okay, so what I need to do is prepare for winter. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. Um, and so what your body then does is it goes into fat storage mode, which is why people get fatter on fatter and fatter and fatter year on year. It's because we're eating for winter, basically. We're eating for the for the fall season. So you eat for winter for 30 years, you might have some bad effects. You might get fat, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's when you look at why why, for example, is the American population and the and the UK population and the Canadian population and the Australian population, the New Zealand population, all these countries. Why are we also goddamn fat? And it's because we're eating for winter. We're eating a lot of fat and a lot of carbohydrate. Um, so you get fat and fatness in, encourages, um, well, not only fat, not fat, not only encourages inflammation, fatness, fat storage is actually mediated by inflammation. When you're storing fat, it's because you are inflamed. Um, and being inflamed is step one requirement number one it is the root cause of atherosclerosis heart disease that we were talking about earlier it's not cholesterol it's inflammation that's the problem so if you eat a standard western diet if you eat a diet that is high in both carbohydrates and also in fats you are asking for fatness you are asking for inflammation you're asking for heart disease diabetes etc 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 so you take these people 
who have been eating that way, who are fat, who are inflamed, who do have the developing situation of heart disease percolating away, and you put them on a vegan diet, what you're doing is you're removing most of the fat. So now you've got them on a carbohydrate only diet pretty much. So that will regress the heart disease in the first three to five years that you have them on a vegan diet. Unfortunately, by the time the three to five years is up on the vegan diet that the heart disease has regressed during, that person's health is now fucked. Because they're depleted in everything. They are depleted in absolutely everything. So yes, yes, absolutely, a vegan diet will regress your heart disease situation. Can I make a bold statement and say this almost sounds like they're, the benefits that they're receiving is what somebody would receive if they were to go on, let's say, a fast? Just yeah. a long-term fast. Is that essentially yeah. what we're, which yep. will eventually kill you if you fast too long? Yep. Yep. Um, yes, pretty much exactly. And, and that's an argument that I have used myself in the past is I've, I've kind of said to people, you know, if uh, when they say, oh, the vegan diet is the only diet that's been shown to regress heart disease. I say, yeah, absolutely, you're right. Yes, we've all read the Yes, we've seen study. We, uh, you know, I'm quite happy that's what it does say. Uh, however, let's have a look at another condition. Let's have a, have a look at the condition of obesity. Um, I can give you a diet that will cure your obesity, 100% guaranteed, uh, no problems at all. And I'll tell you what the diet is. Uh, it's the snake diet. Uh, it's it's fasting, long term. It's, it's no food at all, actually. <laughs> uh, no food at all will cure your, your obesity, absolutely. But it will fucking kill you if you keep yes. it up too long. Now, the same thing is absolutely true of veganism. Your veganism will cure your heart disease in the first instance, but it will also kill you if you keep it up long enough. Um, you so know, it's safe up. to say it's not the only diet that will reverse your bad decision making from Correct. the standard Western diet. And I see, and that's the thing. I think the, the vegans, when they use their when they use their science, they're not using their science against you know carnists that eat meat, work out, mitigate stress, and live mm. holistic lifestyles. They're comparing it against the you know, I hate to say it, you know, the blue collar, you know, blue Correct. collar family that is rushing, you know, all over the city, a lot of stress, making paycheck to paycheck, eating fast food. That's who they're comparing themselves to. They're Correct. not comparing themselves to people on the other side of the aisle that are taking care of themselves, mitigating stress, Correct. reducing alcohol, tobacco, you know, that are yeah. just eating meat diets. Is that safe yeah. to say? Yes. Yeah. So the, as I said, the, the problem is mixing fats and carbohydrates. That makes your body think it's autumn. That makes you inflamed. That makes you store fat. That gives you heart disease, diabetes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if could beer, could, could vegan beer, Oreos and French fries cause similar, um, you know, results in a vegan? Just throwing uh, it out there. If you eat a shit vegan diet, then you're still going to be unhealthy, aren't you? No. Is, is that really possible? <laughs> yeah, yeah. and the vegans the vegans will be the first ones to tell you that they'll say ah oh, these there are vegans doing it wrong right uh, okay. what you're talking about is definitely doing it wrong but where, where i'm getting to that is is that when you've got a situation where you're eating fats and carbohydrates that's the problem if you remove one of those macros largely that will sort that problem out so if you remove all the fats yep cool that'll do it but that will lead you to a deficiency situation i.e that's the vegan approach or you can remove most of the carbohydrates, so you still aren't mixing fats and carbs. Now you're still, you know, on a on a healthy uh, platform, on a healthy path, but there are no deficiencies associated with the carnivorous lifestyle. So right. why the hell wouldn't you choose the one that's healthy? No, I that's I guess there's a lot to be there's a lot to be said with that, and it's something that I feel um, kind of long about way. I think we all feel very you know very similar. Um, in that and i feel like it's just having somebody like you that can you know really break it down into you know biteable portions mm -hmm. that, that make sense um but yeah like i said i mean there when i look at these studies and I, I guess the biggest thing coming from you know how i look at this man you know it's it's kind of interesting when you say that not you but when vegans say that hey this diet reverses heart disease and then you're like okay well explain it to me what diet were they eating well, they just weren't eating animal products. I know, but what were they eating? Because you have so many walk away videos and you would think that, you know, if, if vegans are right, let's just, you know, I'm just going to break break it down from their own statements. Apparently, we're, we're predispositioned genetically to be vegans, according to them. We've been, you know, we're supposed to be, right? They have all this 
they have all this uh, facts of association um, mm -hmm. with no Tiny mechanization. Studies. Yeah, they Tiny have all studies. this epidemiology studies. They have all these things. They have every YouTuber explaining what they're eating down to the micros, macros, weighing it on a digital scale. You have all these different templates to look at, and people are trying, and they're doing everything they can. They're buying all the supplements, and they're still killing themselves. You yeah. know what I mean? At what point are they? I mean, I, I don't know how much longer of a leg they have to stand on. Um, I kind of want to go back. I kind of want to go back to what we were talking about as far as laws and limitation. This is something that I am openly, you know, saying that is something to look at. What scientific research have you seen on plant residues? Um, because I feel like when we're talking about veganism, you know, mm. we can't look at this in a vacuum. We have to look at this for what it really is. And I feel like I think it's I think it's no there's no surprise that the the plant based foods that vegans are eating today in modern day mm. 2019 are in some cases one eighth the, the nutrient count of what our great grandfathers ate when you know yeah. they were able to yeah. go out to the front yard and take an yeah. apple off, off the tree. Yeah, yeah. Populations <laughs> increasing, more petrochemicals are being used, more yeah. pesticides are being used. Mm -hmm. At what point are we going to? I mean, because from the studies I've seen, we're already seeing these dangerous pesticides in urine and in blood when yeah. doctors are taking blood. And I, I know I've. I know I've personally have seen that taking, taking you know when you do labs on patients. At what point is it going to be where we're, vegans are going to be forced to say, "Yeah, I'm eating plants that have carcinogens on them" because that's what they're doing. You know, at what yeah. point are we going to see this really hit the scientific literature hard? I think, to be honest with you, that there is a lot of money at stake here, and there is a lot of money changing hands to ensure that a lot of this uh, data does not come out in the literature. Um, cause the UK is the first place I saw it. There was a family mm -hmm. that was getting sick and they did, they did urine, they did a urine panel and they saw that they had high levels of pesticides in their, yeah. in their urine. And that's kind of brought, it brings up the, you know, organic versus non-organic debate within veganism. Yeah. But at some point you're, we're going to have to decide that when mm -hmm. vegans are talking about meat is a carcinogen and all this other bullshit, at what point mm -hmm. are they going to admit that they are putting purposefully putting carcinogens on their plant products and then consuming them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like at what point is this, the data going to show? Yeah. Mm. I hate to break it to you guys, but uh, e eating these plants are, are actually killing you. Yeah. I mean, th there's the human intervention stuff that you're talking about there in terms of the carcinogens, the pesticides, the, the residues of the nonsense, the 1080, the DDT, whatever else. And it's, it's a very, very serious issue. I mean, what, what we're basically talking about there is another form of absolutely unacceptable pollution of our environment by human beings to suit a financial agenda uh, and to, to, to subserve the needs for a good um, outcome in terms of crop size and all that kind of stuff. The health of the people be damned. That's, you know, it, it's about bottom right hand corner. It's about dollars and cents in the bank. So they don't care. Uh, and they're making so much money that they can pay off the science to keep all of this hush hush. And I'll give you an example. I went to school with a bloke. When I say went to school, went to graduate school with a bloke who was in Nam. And obviously he was affected. As a, as a function of that by the, the DDT situation that was going on there. Agent Orange, yeah. Yeah, the Agent Orange and stuff. Um, and he had, you know, massive, massive health problems because of the dioxins and stuff that were involved in that. It, it completely destroyed his health. Absolutely. Um, he has since died. And that's, you know, the situation there is, is what, what's going on there. But I also had a client uh, in my... Um, first or second year straight out of graduate school and uh, you know we did some blood testing because we were concerned that you know there might have been a problem along those lines and that person had half the levels in their body that my colleague had and he was he was in NAM he was they had you know Agent Orange DDT yeah. dumped on them um, you know in massive massive amounts uh, and, and here's a person from the general population that was half his age who'd never been anywhere near, you know, a, a, a situation like that. They'd just been eating, you know, a plant-based diet for, you know, 10, 15 years. And they had half the levels of dioxin in their blood that this guy that was numb.
was subject yeah, and to. I just, and I feel like personally, um, if we're talking about what's best for the world and what's best, and we're not get, gonna get into ethics, but scientifically speaking, I mean, plant-based agriculture is destroying the world, is killing the world. I mean, I, yeah. I don't think that, I mean, is there any, I mean, is there any? Is there? I mean, is there any science, or is there anything that can refute that statement? Because I no. don't think there is. I mean, only an ideology. There, there isn't. Because even when people try to say, and this is something I found in the research, you always hear that well, animal agriculture is the number one. The only reason why people, the only reason why they get that number is because they include plant agriculture and animal agriculture, and say it's the it's the only spectrum because there is grain finish. There's grain finish livestock. So they add yeah. everything that's bad with, when they talk about dead zones, they're really talking about the plant agriculture industry dumping pesticides into the, into the ocean. But since, you know, cattle are grain, grain finished, they include all the bad stuff from plant agriculture and they dump it on this market and they say, everything is caused from this. Yeah. And it's really, I mean, it's not true. And it's so I, yeah, it's a hundred percent disingenuous. So, you know, when we're talking about, well, most, most livestock are fed, 60 70 percent i mean those numbers are inflated first off and livestock don't need don't 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 need that you know big agriculture has its issues and mm -hmm. so i just don't understand i mean I, I i see i think europe i think the uk is really leading the way with the plant residue research that i've seen but um mm -hmm. i think we use a lot more of it probably here in the states and it's just at what point are we gonna you know like you said we're gonna start taking our kids in to get tested mm -hmm. and they're gonna have these levels of you know I, you know, these, these horrible chemicals and toxins, diet toxins mm -hmm. that we're seeing in our service members or people that are in affected areas, you know, yeah. and, uh, me having grown up around agriculture, having grown up around big agriculture and far as, you know, where I've grown up, you see the signs, you know, no, mm -hmm. no trespassing. And then the very next sign you see, you know, uh, spraying and process, you know, a danger zone here. Like I grew up seeing that, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's one of those things where I, I know that, it's an issue, um, but it's one that the vegan community has, you know, failed to even bring up and mention. And it's one that, you know, I think it should, I mean, realistically, plants, plant products, if I'm not wrong, they're very inferior just because they're laced with chemicals and yeah. they don't have the, the, the nutrient content. So what are we, what is somebody actually getting? And I'm a, I'm plant-based. I can, I, I have no problem admitting that because I know where my food's coming from, but realistically speaking, how, I mean, how insignificant and uh, I mean, the, the food that people are buying at the grocery store, the vegans are getting their food from the grocery store. How bad are those plant-based products? Like how, I mean, how unnutrient dense are they? Like what are we really looking at present day and then long-term do you think based upon what, what you've seen? It, it seems to me like in terms of energy density, Right, that the, the, the foods are, uh, are being genetically modified over generations and generations to be more and more and more energy dense, meaning you know containing more and more starch and sugar in the plants. Uh, we can we can see that clearly. You look at how plants were a hundred years ago and how they are now. You've probably seen these ones online where they say this is what a banana looked like a hundred years yeah. ago, and it's a different animal altogether. Sorry, not animal. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's completely totally different. different. Yeah, um, seeds. What's that? Yeah, well, ooh, seeds in a banana. What are these little black things, you know? Well, they're the things that the banana used to grow from before they became a monoclonal type thing. Anyway, that's right. another thing. No, you're, no, you're right. So much, much more energy dense, and, and it's in the form of sugar and starch, which will kill you. Um, but in terms of the nutrients, not only is the nutrient level going down and down and down, and, you know, I think there is, there is perfectly sufficient uh, research evidence to support that theory, the human pesticides are going up and up and up because the pests are evolving. And so the pesticide needs to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And there's more and more and more of it being used. And that doesn't even account for the naturally occurring pesticides in the plants that the plants themselves manufacture against being eaten. Because plants fight back. People, I don't think people realize that either. People don't get that. People think that plants are just... Um, some kind of Victims food without, beasties. Yeah. yeah. No, they're not just sitting there waiting for you to eat them, Charlie Brown. They are they are putting chemicals into their leaves and their stems and stuff to say to you, if you want to eat me, you have at it, but you're going to pay for it. 
and that's you know basically what it is i don't know if you saw my chat the other day with um elliot about oxalates for example i got i started i didn't finish it i will definitely do okay. that probably man that yeah you need to see that whole video because elliot laid it out um, and it's it's not just you know, people think of oxalates as being a problem in terms of kidney stones and in terms of oxalate crystal formation that kind of thing and absolutely it is um uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that calcium oxalate crystals can form anywhere in the body not just right. in the kidneys and wherever they are they're like little razor blades and cause all sorts of problems you know in any and tissues I think that people body. don't realize that too i mean like take nightshades for example tobacco mm. is a nightshade i don't think people realize that you know what i mean and mm. it's one of those things where you know the what was it the kale smoothies back in the day or whatever the spinach smoothies everyone thought that you know oh this is a superfood i just have to ingest ungodly yeah. amounts of it and i'm going to be healthy and yeah mm -mm. yeah i just no. yeah no yeah. you know I, I think there's there's a lot to be said there and yeah. you know I so mean, yeah I, I personally think a little bit, I mean, I, I like vegetables. I think they're good, but I know I can't go, I can't overload on them. And I know that it won't give me everything I need. It's, nope. just, it's just a scientific, yeah. scientific yeah. fact. So, Correct. yeah. So, you know, oxalate crystals anywhere in the body, not just in the kidneys, but it's not just about oxalate crystals. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that oxalates directly poison your mitochondria, directly interfere with mitochondrial function. Yeah. You know, that's not a good thing. No, that's, that's not a good thing at all. Um, a lot of people don't realize that oxalates directly cause sulfate wasting in the body. Uh, and if you want to know why that's a problem, you should probably go and we'll have a look at that video. It's on my channel. Yeah, I'll most um, definitely finish it's it. It's called, I think it's called the best oxalate talk that you'll ever see or something yes, like that. Yes, that's what it's yeah. called. Um, and it's myself chatting to a young fella called Elliot, who is incredibly knowledgeable in this area. I just found him doing a web search and I just reached right. out to him and said, mate, you got to come and you know talk to my people about this. So, uh, but everybody you, has, yeah. Yeah. Do you think there's any benefit to, um, is there any certain plant products that you think would be good or beneficial? Um, I know for where my culture comes from, you know, there's there's a big emphasis on ginger and turmeric and a lot of that other thing. A lot of it's used for medicinal and you yeah. know things like that. So but what are your what are your there thought are, processes on those? There are clear, obvious examples of particular extracts from plants, not whole plants, particular things out of plants that can have a therapeutic effect, can be useful. Uh, turmeric is one that you mentioned there. If you have the um, the active ingredient that the the capsaicin out of the turmeric, uh, for example, that that does have a, a therapeutic effect, a known therapeutic effect. There's evidence on that in the literature. You can go and look that up. But if you eat the whole turmeric, or even the whole turmeric root, you're going to get a fuck ton of oxalates as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a scientific measure, the fuck ton, but I like it. No, it's good. I think it, the, yeah. I think it's just slightly more than a shitload. Yeah, um, I mean, it, yeah. it's it's more it's more scientific than uh, than Esselstyn study. So I appreciate using yeah. actual facts there. Um, High level correlations, <laughs> right? No, and I, I and I think that you know there, like I said, there is something to be said, but you have to look at it, you know, holistically. They want to yeah. look at vegans want to look at animal products holistically. Well, you know, and by animal products, they want to look at animal agriculture in mm -hmm. its all forms but they don't want to look at the plants they that they intake in all forms and mm -hmm. and stuff like that so i guess that that's where that's where my biggest uh that's where my biggest thing comes in because it's more a, i see it as a way of taking away liberty and freedom and not encouraging scientific yeah. debate and discussions and things like that and i feel like that's the biggest um that's the biggest downside and misnomer to to what they espouse and i think it's really um, yeah. detrimental to humanity as a whole. I know humanity is a big word and it means, you know, it's over encompassing, but I think when you're telling people that all animal products are bad and it's going to kill them. And mm -hmm. here is some slaughterhouse footage of angry, disgruntled workers that get paid, you know, minimum wage to do a job. No one wants to do. I think that's very disingenuous to health. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. not health. That's your, you know, that's your, uh, bias. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. kind of how I feel about that. Yep. Yeah. No, agreed entirely, entirely. Well, I think we got everything that I wanted to touch up on. I mean, I think, I mean, outstanding as always. Um, is there anything else you want to add or anything you want to tell 
those people out there? Um, I don't know if you want to go into the stuff that we alluded to a little bit. I mean, I know I've talked about it uh, online already, but maybe some people haven't heard the sort of some of the mechanistic stuff around the cholesterol argument. Yeah, what, sure. Yeah. Uh, why, why it is not uh, a causal not. thing. Um, so we, we talked about, okay, first of all, the, the argument that it's, that it's um, a causal artifact in heart disease is based on a correlation. So that's nonsense and spurious in the first instance. Uh, that's unscientific in the extreme, uh, ill-disciplined in the extreme, and you know no decent scientist would ever uh, lean on a correlation as a, as a causal artifact because scientists are about uh, mechanism. They're about how does this work. Um, in terms of cholesterol, uh, there are a lot of things we need to understand about cholesterol. First of all, 80% of the cholesterol in your body at any given time uh, is not derived from your diet. It is actually manufactured by your body from your foods, be those carbohydrate-based, fat-based, protein, or whatever they are. That sounds it like a very inconvenient fact for, for, for vegans. It, it is, basically. What it, what it says is that you know 80% of your cholesterol is manufactured by your body, and your body doesn't care what the food was that you consumed. It will make the cholesterol anyway. Basically, it's it's constructed from the very base building block in the metabolic pathway. It's called acetyl coenzyme A. Uh, that is the first intermediary of the tricarboxylic acid or Krebs cycle, if you like. So when you are taking food, your food is broken down in the first instance to acetyl coenzyme A, and that's whether it's proteins, fats, carbohydrates, or whatever. So basically from that point, then everything that's built up from there in your metabolism uh, is based on acetyl coenzyme A pretty much, uh, including cholesterol. So why does your body generate cholesterol? Well, in the first instance, it generates cholesterol because you have a gene in your um in your DNA that says make cholesterol. Now that's that's interesting, isn't it? Because yeah. what that tells us is here is a length of DNA. Here is some some uh, T's and G's and A's and C's and a double helix structure in our in our DNA that says make this cholesterol. And that gene is there because it has survived three point eight billion years of natural selection. Well, that's a long time. Mm. So maybe, just maybe, the cholesterol, oh, I don't know, is there for a reason. Maybe that gene is there because we need the cholesterol. So let's look at what cholesterol does in our body, shall we? Yes, we well, shall. Number one, cholesterol makes up 50% by weight of every cell membrane of every one of the around about 3 trillion cells in your body. It's kind of important. That's kind of important. If you can't make good, you know, cell uh, boundaries, cell um, membranes, you're going to die very, so, very quickly. So, what can vegans? I mean, honestly, like at this point, what can they honestly say about? I mean, how how can you demonize cholesterol? If well, I'll tell you what they say. Is, yeah. I'll tell you what they say. At this like, point. How do you even get around that? We it's like saying water is important. Studies. We have high-level studies. We have these associative studies. The higher your blood cholesterol, the higher your risk of heart disease. It's very, very clear. What are you talking about? That's what they say. I don't. I mean, I don't get it. I mean, it's it's no. it's so important and so vital. Yeah. Um, I just at this point, I. So besides them saying that there are studies that prove associations based upon epi, based upon epidemiology. So, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. There are high-level studies that are paid for by Big Pharma that are produced by filling in a questionnaire. And since yeah. enough people fill out the, this questionnaire, we're able to um, extract this information the way we want it. We've interpreted it this way, therefore it's bad. Is that what we're, is that we're really, honestly, well, where we're at? That's, that's where it started. From there it's developed and they've gone, well, let's, let's be a bit more scientific. Let's be a bit more experimental. And they've, they've got rid of the... Um, the respondent data and what they've done is they've actually taken blood samples and measured the uh, cholesterol in all its different fractions in the people's blood and they've then correlated that with the incidence of heart disease over time 
So they've got a correlation between a level of the stuff, cholesterol, in your blood and the incidence of heart disease. And what they found is the higher the level of a certain subfraction of the cholesterol, the LDL fraction, um, the higher the incidence of heart disease. Um, and that is a relationship that follows a certain mathematical description and it has a certain degree of accuracy, uh, which by the way is poor, uh, but that's another story. So when do and, you think these big, cause I'm looking at people that are carnists, right? And yep. I feel like when, when this study does come out and I, I believe it will, and I believe it will it maybe won't come out soon, soon, but it, eventually it will come out. I think the results are going to be absolutely staggering. Um, we've already seen, you know, big names like Jordan Peterson, his mm. his family, mm. big athletes, doctors, researchers, mm. these mm -hmm. people that are doing this diet. I feel like people that do do this diet do it because it's so, I mean, it's so taboo that they're really doing it because out of almost desperation, it feels like that, like they're, they're going to this and they're seeing these great results mm. and they're conscious about what they eat. They're conscious about their health. So when this study comes out, it's going to be a landmark. What do you think sure. the first cover-up operation is going to be? Like, what do you think is going to happen when this literature finally hits, finally hits? Like, how's the dust going to settle in your opinion? Uh, you know what I, I mean? Because I just feel yeah, like I it's going to be. I do. I'm not sure exactly how they're going to worm out of it. I'm not, I'm not sure what you can say once the, I mean, what do they say? The proof is in the pudding. Right. And when you've actually do have, uh, some good observational data on a large enough sample size of human beings that says, number one, these people did not drop dead of a heart attack. Number two, none of them got scurvy. Number three, none of them have any kind of deficiencies at all. Number four, their systemic inflammation has dropped through the floor. Uh, number five, their anxiety is gone. Number six, their autoimmune problems are gone, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera till the cows come home. What do you say? I don't I guess know. You have and to throw why. your hands up and go, okay, we were wrong. They're not going to do that, of course, because of the money involved. I mean, I mean personal attacks. I mean, I, I mean, I don't uh, know what – I think it's going to be on a scale that we've never seen before. You know sure. what I mean? Like I think everybody, you know, and I'm not trying to get political, but every time Donald Trump does something stupid ever, or says something or whatever, people go crazy. But I feel like this is going to be – it's going to make – this is going to make, you know, that seem almost irrelevant. I think it's going to be – that much of a of an uprise, you know what I mean? Because it's going to change the way everybody looks at food. Yep, one hundred ten percent. It's going to change yeah. everything. Cool, absolutely everything. I, mean, I, I don't, and I really, I don't know how that plays out. I guess is my my short answer to that one. Um, moving on with the with the cholesterol story a bit. So we've got fifty percent of every cell membrane in every one of the three trillion cells in our body. That's cholesterol. Uh, it provides structural integrity. It holds the cell wall together. It, it, it stops the thing from falling apart. It's it's vital. Without it, you die. Um, ever heard of testosterone? Yes, I have. But well, most people have too. Um, <laughs> testosterone. <laughs> testosterone is um, built directly off um, cholesterol. Explains why Sean Baker so manly, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Same, same thing is true of estrogen. So if you're a woman, sorry, you still need cholesterol too because estrogen is made from cholesterol. Um, vitamin D, that's cholesterol-based. Yeah. Without cholesterol, you can't make vitamin D. Um, vitamin K, same deal, cholesterol. Um, ever heard of myelin sheaths? Yes. Yep, so they, they are like um, insulating electrical tape around various different nerve cells in your body. Mm -hmm. uh, the role is that it allows you to transmit nerve signals uh, fast enough to be useful. So you've got a lot of them in your brain and you've got them throughout your peripheral nervous system throughout your body as well. Uh, myelin is made from um, cholesterol. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm not trying to stop here. I just don't understand. So... This is science. This is yep. proved in, in the literature. Yep. And the idea is if we eat enough grass, kale, and carrots, our body will produce this cholesterol that we need to totally function. I mean, is that. Well, it will. You know I mean, I mean like, I, 
Yeah, your body will produce the cholesterol it requires, irrespective of what your diet is, pretty much. Cholesterol is that vital in your body that your body will actually react and say, okay, I need to make some more cholesterol because you're not eating enough. Right. So it will do that. But, of course, that comes at a cost because it means that, you know, there's less of the very little nutrient that was in the food in the first instance left for other things. Exactly. And then you deteriorate and you break down. Correct. And you Correct. Yeah. And so then you waste away and you die and you lose ability to because I just I found and I've I don't know if, I, I'm sure everyone has talked about the Tim She thing or whatever. I, I don't really I don't know all the vegan activist names, but I just found it very interesting that everyone's demonizing him for um, the fact that he was able to I mean, this is crazy, the fact that he actually was able to uh, have sexual arousal because he I guess for months he's been mm-hmm. unable yeah. to you know, and I know Freely and a couple other have lost, you know, vegans have lost their ability to reproduce. Like, sh- I mean, doesn't mm-hmm. that tell you that, you know, your diet, you, you're basically, your body's mechanism is saying you can't reproduce because you, basically yeah. <laughs> it almost sounds like you're not, you're not doing what's necessary to reproduce. Okay. Therefore, we're not biologically, allowed to. Biologically, you have one purpose. Exactly. Your one purpose biologically is to pass your genes on and to reproduce. If, if you if your body can't do that because of your diet, how can you tell me that diet is good? Oh, how can you tell me that there's been tribes and you can evolve if you can't pass on your genes to the next generation? So I just oh, thought that was crazy. He, yeah. he ate a piece of salmon. Next thing you know, his body's like, all right, Tim, now you yeah. now you get it. You know what I mean? And yeah. Yep. Oh, gosh. Okay. Just well, crazy, crazy stuff. And people uh, may say that's anecdotal, but you're absolutely right. I mean, you're that's a basic function of what it is to be an an organism you know uh, a living being Mm. Uh, so yeah if you i I just i found that to be everybody attacks him for that but i found that to be very very telling i hate to break it to you if it you know if i was in a position where it's just like hey you can't reproduce anymore you can't you know you can't do any of that stuff you need to eat meat i'm sorry i okay the divide eat this raw like it's that it should be that important you know what i mean like (laughs) what do i got to do yeah don't know don't know it's uh, what what we're up against here is is an entrenched dogma. We're, in, we're up and against an, an entrenched uh, ideology. We're up against people who will jealously defend their position in the face of a crumbling edifice of pseudoscience, pseudo logic, um, nonsense. It just you know stuff that begars belief that you will hear coming out of the mouths of these people uh, in support of this ideology in support of this dietary program that all we can say is anybody that wants to look at any of the science and any of the physiology and any of the biology involved can only come to one conclusion and that one conclusion is that the vegan lifestyle will fucking kill you yeah I mean, there's no way to do it. I mean, I think there's some people that may be able to do it with a ton of supplementation. Outside yeah. of that, you, I mean, you can't do it. And even then, I mean, what yeah. quality of life is taking a ton of supplements in order to make well, it? Well, I mean, the, the brain damage that you see is, is unbel- I mean, you saw that chat I had with Gary the other day. My God. Yeah, it was, I'm not going to lie. It was hard to watch. I, I, I was going to oh. comment. I was going to comment and say that you shouldn't, you shouldn't treat disabled people that way. But I, I <laughs> felt bad. <laughs> I felt well, bad. Yeah. And I just, I, it just his laughing like I felt like he wasn't understanding what you were saying and I'm not I mean, I'm not I don't know the guy I don't know if you got you gathered that but as an outsider looking in that you know didn't know him very well um I felt like he wasn't understanding what you were saying to him he just kind of laughed <laughs> so what, what, what you're saying oh that's interesting <laughs> I'm, I'm told you know? that he used to be quite sharp um you know, people that have followed him for a while have said he used to be sharp. He used to be bright. He used to be intelligent. I didn't see that. I yeah, saw I a know. desperately, desperately ill man. Yeah. So, desperately trying, trying to cling to I don't even know what. Right. So if I may ask, what's uh, what's in the future? You have some obviously some huge big time debates. I mean, I know I know Doc, Dr. Garth has I, I'm sure he has a following of millions on various platforms. Um, yeah, so sure. what's kind of what's kind of the next uh, next um, move, move for you here? Well, Gregor is in my uh, in my sights. I want to talk to Gregor. I want to ask him why he thinks it's okay to come online and outright lie to people about the contents of research papers. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I'm looking forward to his response on that. It's not just, feel, he's not even making reprisal? mistakes. Do you feel reprisal at all? But uh, whether that's uh, litigation or, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure you probably don't you feel fear for your safety, but as far as reprisal of litigation, lawsuits, torts, that kind of thing, I mean, do you feel like? Um, not really. It's, feathers? It's, it's not something that keeps me awake at night. I mean, I, I sleep well. I have a clear conscience. So I know that what I'm doing is right. I know that I'm speaking the truth as science shows it to be. Right. The only reason why I ask um, is because um, how I got to know you or know, know of your work is based upon, and I'm a little late to the game, so I've been kind of trying to play catch up, but um, I guess uh, there have been a lot of people since the whole uh, vegan games thing, which I honestly don't really, I mean, you can hash on it, but I, I don't really, I don't think there's much to say, but people saying that they want to come after you and hard, you know, hard strike your channel. Like I, I've seen, and I didn't know you even know who you were, and I'm like, wow, I've never seen so many people like legitly outright trying to do everything they can to get you banned from, um, mm. from, from just being able to speak. And so when I then then I went to your channel and I was like, this guy seems pretty reasonable to me. Yeah. So I know that there's definitely a, fa- a fan base of people that, you know, have conspired at, at yeah. least openly. So Sorry. I was wondering if there's something, if you to borrow, to borrow a line from the movie, you know, the matrix, we are still here. <laughs> Very true. Yeah, they haven't got rid of us. Um, we're still speaking. We will continue to speak. Hey, and if I lose my channel for any reason, I can start another channel. Yeah. That's no problem. You know, at the end of the day, uh, there are a bunch of um, rules and regulations, I guess, community standards that YouTube sees they have. And you can breach those standards three times and they'll delete your channel. Uh, unless you've got more than 300,000 supporters, in which case they'll undo their deletion, they'll unban you, and they'll put you right back on again without any penalty. So Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, I don't know if you saw the conversation we had with uh, Carnival, uh, on mm-hmm. Carnival's channel about it, but yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's why I bring it up, um, not to rehash that whole video, but you know, I definitely feel like when you are doing what you're doing, you know, um, mm. it does take some in my opinion, it does take bravery. It does take you putting yourself out there just sure. for the sheer fact that, you know, I look at your channel and I know how much content I have on my channel and I've had on a previous channel. I know mm. how much time and effort of labor of love it went into making that. And so for that all to disappear over the fact that you have some internet trolls that legitly don't care about the science, don't care about the facts. They're just like, hey, this guy says something we don't like. Let's figure out a way to hard strike him. And I'm yeah. just wondering, you know, so you have the fan base that will try to get you off the platform. And then you mm. have people that like the Dr. Gregors and people of influence that have donors and supporters and yeah. big, big pharma money that are able to just tie you up in litigation and red tape. And th- th- I mean, so you kind of have it from both both sides. I'm just wondering if that's ever something that you think about or you just. Yeah, not really. I, I, I can't afford to worry about that too much. All right. I can do is speak the truth as I see it on the basis of my quite significant understanding of the science involved. All I can do is keep telling the story about, you know, things like cholesterol, what it does in your body, why it's there, how it's not causal. Um, you know, and all I need to do there to finish off that discussion is to say, okay, so we've got this correlation between high cholesterol levels and heart disease. Why is that? Well, um, you know how I said that 50% of all your cell membranes are cholesterol? I remember that, yeah. Okay. Now, if you damage the epithelial cells lining your vascular system on the high pressure side, your arteries, they become physically damaged for some reason and inflamed for some reason. Oh, don't you think I'm going with that? Yeah. Don't you think those cells are going to need some base material to help rebuild themselves? Like anything that needs repair, absolutely. Uh, so that would be cholesterol, wouldn't it? It would. So if you're inflamed and you've got damaged epithelial cells, those cells are going to cry out for cholesterol. So that is going to activate the gene that says make some more cholesterol, and so your cholesterol level is going to go up. Wow. So your the body's going to yeah. The cholesterol is there to repair the damage. That's why there's a high cholesterol level associated in a lot of cases with with heart disease atherosclerosis. It's not causal. It's there to do a job. The way you think about this is to go, every single time you see a major forest fire, if you go and have a look, you are going to find firemen there, aren't you? Yes, you are. Okay. Were they the cause of the fire? No. Just, Just because they're there? No. No. End of discussion. 
It's ridiculous. It's stupid. That's actually um, really good. I mean, that's you should uh, you should hashtag that. No, that's really yeah. good. That's good. See, that's the thing. That's a good way of putting it because mm. you know it's. I mean, that's that's one hundred percent true. Mm. You know, and in, and and in this case, when you're talking about you know correlation causation, you know, I think that's the thing. People don't understand how the body works, and they want to take what they hear. They don't care about where it comes from, how they get it. It's here to push a narrative because at the end of the day. We know veganism isn't about health. It's about a misguided. It's about misguided virtue signaling for animals. But I think the people pulling the strings. It's all about human control. Yeah. You can control people and how they eat. I mean, you pretty much got you got them where you want them. I mean, I don't know yeah. what what what's more what's more over encompassing than you know okay. choosing well, what you eat. My my view on it is that all organized religion is a tool to subjugate the masses. That's why it's there. There's no other reason for organized religion, and I believe veganism is an organized religion. Yeah, I think there's something to be said there for sure. It is. It is there to subjugate the masses. It is there to control people. Yeah, uh, I mean, and people that will that will buy into being controlled in that way and to thinking the way that they're being brainwashed and to think, and then support that ideology uh, jealously to the point of death, basically, literally. Um, yeah. No, no, I, I totally agree with you. Well, that was definitely a eye opening and I learned I learned a lot more than I than than I expect to, which is absolutely outstanding. See how I snuck that in there? All the teaching yeah. and stuff. <laughs> that was that was good. I like I like how you did that. Yeah, was, you're gonna learn whether you want to or not. <laughs> no, and that's and I remember when I was emailing you, I was like, you know, we're really excited about learn because like I said, I think that we as as normal, you know, people that have the ability to think for ourselves, I think we understand that animal products are good. The standard American diet is bad. The Western diet is bad. You know, causation does equal correlation. But you are the first person I think that's come out that's able to take these take these arguments and make them into a scientific, fact based, um, you know, template to which we can to which we can espouse upon. You know, what I mean, I'm not trying to say you're the Jordan Peterson of, you know, the anti-vegan movement, but you do a really good job of breaking down these these elements to biteable size pieces. I mean, I feel like I can argue ethics all all day, but when you have doctors that are coming out that are making these claims and saying these things, you know, it's really hard to you know take them and, and look at every study and understand you know the very nuances of what scientific literature is. And then here we have you, somebody who noses backwards and forwards that has the ability to say, hey, you're wrong. And I think the whole the whole watchdog thing, that's exactly what it is. And I think that's so important in the modern in modern day. So, you know, I can definitely say that uh, you bring more to the table than uh, than I think what they you bring more pushback than I think what they what they expected. So sure. well thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. that. You're not the hero we deserve, but the one we need, Batman. <laughs> that's it. Yes. Perhaps I should wear a mask. You yeah. should <laughs> You should. Oh, hang on. There's already some clown doing that, isn't there? Running yeah. around. Oh, that guy's an idiot. Anyway, that's another story as well. Yeah. Well, no, it, was, it was great. I hope we can do yeah. this again whenever you're not, you know, I know you can be busy, but uh, it was yeah. absolutely outstanding. And um, I hope that you have a good one. And I look forward to seeing the Oxalate video. And more importantly, I look forward to seeing this video you have going on with Garth. I'm very excited about that and I uh, can't wait to see it. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, thanks for having me on. I do appreciate that. Um, I hope that it was, you know, valuable for everybody. Do consider, um, if you aren't already, subbing to my channel. And also you can find me on Patreon. Uh, it is Bart underscore K. So very easy to find. Um, you know, get over there and support that. Uh, it's how I make my living. I don't work in academia anymore. In fact, I work in a fruit juice factory of all places, stomping apples for people. And I really uh, would be much better if I could focus on what I'm doing here instead of having to work 48 hours a week, 12 hours on, 12 hours off. In Absolutely. A factory. I, I add your card in, in there and I'll make sure all your links are there. And then if you want, you can, once it's posted, you can download it, attach it to yours. There's like some good info that's kind of came out a different way. So feel free to come on my channel, download it, and post it on yours. Absolutely. And everybody go, go, take, go take a look at them. This was great. And I hope to do this. Again, maybe uh, Carnival, when he's not so busy next time, can jump in and join us or host it himself. So thank you cool. so much. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right. Have a good one.